Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. In today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about soloing over rhythm changes. I brought it up before, but we're going to get even more in depth on it. And I've provided a few play-alongs at the end of the video, so make sure you stay around for that because um, I've got some full band uh, takes with comping that you can actually play with. So let's get started. <laughs> Now, Rhythm Changes is the chord progression to I Got Rhythm by George Gershwin. I've talked about it a couple times in the past, but I always say Rhythm Changes is what separates a jazz player from a fusion player. Jazz players can play over Rhythm Changes. Now, one of the difficulties about Rhythm Changes is how quickly the chords move through the progression. There are two chords per bar. There's a lot of secondary dominant chords. The bridge goes through the cycle. A D7, G7, C7, F7, and there's a lot of substitute chord changes that can be played. I have a little solo that I've written out for you to practice that uh, incorporates a lot of traditional uh, bebop lines that you would hear Charlie Parker, Joe Pass, or Wes play, and some more modern lines that you might hear Pat Metheny play. So I'm going to play a little rhythm accompaniment and play along with it. Okay, let's take a look at it a little bit slower. Let's follow along with the tab and the notation. Let's do it about this fast. Two, three, four. Okay, so why is rhythm change so tricky to play over? Well, if you take the standard changes, we go from B flat major seven, usually down to a G altered chord. So right there, we have a five of two. So you really need to outline these changes in a certain way. Up a B flat major triad, third flat nine, fifth to the flat seventh to the third of the C minor, and I did. So I'm using a lot of arpeggios, I'm using a lot of guide tones. One of the ways to practice this is to arpeggiate the chords. Now, one of the things about B flat major seven is that it's really, uh, the second time around, we have a D minor seven to G seven. And this three, six, two, five, or one, six, two, five, it's the same progression. You really need to kind of learn a vocabulary of lines until you're able to solo over it without even thinking about it. But I would do things like, So I'm coming down D minor seven, 
right down to the third of the G7. Right down. There's your G7 uh, to the third of the G7 to the flat nine to the third of the C. track of where these chord tones are. So I'm going to go like this. So I'm playing a bass line and a melody at the same time. This is really how you get to learn where the chord tones and bass notes, how they relate to each other. I'm going to start up here. I'm going to play solo and bass line at the same time, really slowly. This is great practice. And then we're going to F minor. do things like this too. Playing counterpoint like that is a great way to start learning how to play lines that make sense together, where you avoid being so rooty. When I say rooty, I mean playing the root on the downbeats all the time. Because if you play like this, if you're playing the root and then a melody note together, you're more likely to play thirds. Right? And then. It's really actually sounds cool to do that, to practice doing that. You'll get to know your neck better. You'll start to learn how to play contrapuntally and you will learn about direction of line and how your lines relate to the bass. That's a really great exercise. It's honestly a great exercise to do over any kind of chord progression, but rhythm changes in particular because the chords move so quickly. You have to really slowly learn how to arpeggiate them and change right where the chords change so that the listener knows that there is a chord change. So you can actually hear I'm going those notes
So I'm really slowly, I'm taking my time, I'm going over the chords, I'm trying to find those chord tones and, and change them where it's obvious that there's a chord progression going on. You should never need a chord progression behind rhythm changes to know what the chords are. I mean, if you're doing more outside lines, I can understand it. But to really get where you, where you need to be on rhythm changes, start in a couple positions. Like play up here in this 10th position. So I'm playing this B flat. B flat major scale here. And I'm finding where the notes are. Right, so I'm, I'm going to the third of the G7 chord. Work on the solo that I have in here. That will show you the direction of the lines that you should be taking. Um, the chromaticism on the bridge are, are really standard. They're very Charlie Parker-esque lines. If you listen to the Miles Davis quintet version on Relaxin of Olio, you'll hear Miles and Coltrane playing really classic lines that you've heard a million times on rhythm changes. They're the, they're the same lines that Mike Brecker learned when he was learning how to play rhythm changes, go back and learn those solos. Listen to those records, transcribe them. And then you can move on and then move on to, to Charlie Parker, some of the rhythm changes that he had. He had many different rhythm changes tunes. But the Olio is really kind of quintessential. There's so many great solos in it. When people ask me what's the quickest way, and I'm gonna do a whole episode in this, what is the quickest way to become a better player? And the only answer that I ever say is transcription. That doesn't mean that you need to write down the solos. It means you need to learn it and get it under your fingers. You don't have to learn the whole solo. You don't even have to learn half the solo. You can only learn the lines that you like if you want. But the discipline of listening carefully and picking out the notes, try not to do it with a slow downer. If you need to do it that way, that's fine. But if you have a DAW, you can take the solo, you can put it on a track, and you can carve it up into little bits. And you can just learn those little bits and try and hear it with your ear. I'm going to do, a, do an episode on this and how to actually pick out these solos and these really intricate songs. Um, when I was transcribing some of this, uh, one, of the, one of my videos where I did Brad Meldo, Kenny Barron, and Aiden Essen, I did lines of theirs, and they were very complex. And I wasn't using the slow downer at all or anything or whatever you'd call it. I was listening really carefully and singing the notes and then playing them because the voice and the ear can pick them up really fast. The problem is memorizing them or remembering them till you get to your instrument. And even in, in the instant of listening to four notes and then you stop it and then you go to play it, you've already forgotten it half the time. Here's the first play along track. It goes around a couple choruses and then the second one will begin and then after that, the third one that's just a solo guitar will come after that. I'm going to let it play now, and you can ride it out for the rest of the video. Just keep rewinding that part, going over it, going over it, going over it. Start with guide tones, start with your arpeggios, and try and practice it. You want to get it up to this tempo, because the first one's a pretty fast clip. If you can play this, you can get on the bandstand and play with, with any jazz group. Thank you. 
that's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, which has a lot of examples of rhythm changes in there, of lines to play and different substitutions to play, write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.